Number 10, Magma and Mephisto. It's weird that this one is one of the least awkward dates that's on this list, but really, it is. Magma and Mephisto dated after the New Mutants accidentally got transported to a hell dimension instead of the more specific Hella's hell. As such, Mephisto made a deal to transport them out of his hell dimension where they ended up and into hell with one L in exchange for a date with Amara, aka Magma. Amara accepted the terms and the new mutants were successfully transported to their destination. Later, the date with Mephisto started off awkwardly as he took her to the third circle of hell and really tried too hard to romance her. However, after Amara called him out on this and Mephisto revealed his sincere intention to simply have a nice, normal evening be treated as a normal person, the two went out to a restaurant on Earth. Mephisto even got a good night's kiss from Magma at the end of the night, who later agreed to see him again. Number 9, Batman and Wonder Woman. Batman and Wonder Woman have ended up together in the comics before, but they also have lived infinite lives together through Wonder Woman's dreams. When they shared a kiss in the main continuity, it left the two of them wondering if they should be together or not. Before they ultimately made the choice on whether or not to take the plunge, Wonder Woman decided to hook herself up to Martian Manhunter's transconsciousness articulator, which showed her what kind of potential their life together might hold, at least as far as her own mind saw in regards to possibilities. Although a lot of it was sweet, there was also a lot of dark moments that Wonder Woman saw. In the end, Batman came to her to talk as she woke up and finished her time in the transconsciousness articulator. The two awkwardly then agreed to stay friends, despite it being obvious that they both perhaps are interested in more awkward. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, please head on over to our newest channel, Top 10 Anime, and check them out where we're going to be talking about cool anime stuff and manga, all the good things. La la la. Number 8, Spider-Man and Captain Marvel. Spider-Man and Captain Marvel may have had the most traditionally awkward date in Marvel history. Carol and Spider-Man had flirted a bit during their time working together, but at one point, Spider-Man basically made a deal with Carol to help her in exchange for a date. He was kind of joking, but she ended up accepting, and so they went on this date. The date was extremely awkward, just because both Peter and Carol were putting on personas the whole time, going out to a fancy place, when they kind of just both wanted to chill and like grab some fat food. Fortunately, some crime intervened and they were able to round out the end of the night with chili dogs on a rooftop after, you know, dealing with the crime. Revealing that for both of them, this was really the ideal date. Number 7, Squirrel Girl and Wolverine. Although we never saw the dating on panel, in my mind, I feel like it would be super awkward. So based on my own headcanon, my own imaginings of the implied relationship between these two, I'm including them together as a point. Why is the relationship between them weird for me? Well, aside from the age difference, which many of you have dismissed here on Nerd in the comments whenever I talk about Wolverine, which is fair enough, bub. At this point, it is very hard for Wolverine, at least while on Earth, to find someone to date who is close to his own age. Because, yeah, he ancient. It's just weird though, because these two are so very different. Doreen is like a ray of sunshine with a big glass of friendship on the side, and Wolverine is like an old grumpy loner. However, maybe Doreen was able to bring out a side of Logan that we don't normally see. Even if this was the case though, those dates still sound like they would be awkward as heck to me to read. Though I kind of really want to read them. It was apparently clarified in the letters page of Unbeatable Squirrel Girl issue number two that Wolverine and Squirrel Girl never had a romantic relationship. But based on how they were written together in New Avengers and Wolverine's potential feelings for her as revealed in his own series, I'm not sure I buy it. Also, you know, it's different writers, so every writer can have their own canon about a character but doesn't always stay true when somebody else is writing. You know what I mean? Number 6, Stargirl and Shazam. Stargirl and Shazam dated for a time, and although it wasn't awkward necessarily for them, well it did get awkward for them, but it wasn't awkward for them to start. It was awkward for heroes who knew them. But who also didn't know the secret identity of Shazam. You see, Shazam is actually Billy Batson, who is like a teenage kid, like Stargirl. But when he transforms, he appears as the grown man, Shazam. Forced to choose between Stargirl or his secret identity, Billy ultimately chose to keep the truth that he was a child in a man's body as Shazam a secret. Which ultimately cost Stargirl and Shazam their relationship, as it was too awkward for everyone else to be talking about the apparent scandal that was their relationship because, you know, Sam's an adult and Stargirl's a teenager, so 
people were like, that's not good. Number five, Silk and Spider-Man. The whole idea of Silk and Spider-Man as a couple is really awkward. One of the most awkward romantic times they had together was when Peter's roommate, Anna, walked in on them together while they were on the roof, getting busy. The two heroes were bit by the same radioactive spider, which initially in the canon made them obsessively lustful for one another. They literally couldn't turn it off and prisoners of their own pheromones were forced to hang all over one another at any given opportunity. And even at some inopportune times too. Fortunately, this isn't a thing anymore, but for a time, it made their whole dynamic really weird. Number four, Storm and Doctor Doom. Is there anything more awkward than when your dinner host, after whining and dining you, leans in to encase you in a chrome metal cast? No, I don't think there's anything more awkward than that. Despite the fact that their weird sort of forced dinner date was going well in issue 145 of Uncanny X-Men, Doom decided to ruin it by encasing Storm in chrome. Needless to say, this turn of events on their accidental kind of weird date thing didn't turn out too well for Storm or for Doom either. Storm ends up furious at her predicament and due to claustrophobia, which she suffered from at the time, created a massive storm that plagued the earth. Fortunately, once she was out of her casing, the X-Men were able to like calm her down somewhat and disaster was averted. And Storm even let Doom mostly off the hook for that one after he apologized and claimed he wanted a fresh start with her. Number three, Superman and Big Barda. I suppose we wouldn't technically call this a date, so much as a team up turned sour. This all went down in Action Comics issue 592 to 593. And although it isn't technically a date, it's still really weird and awkward, so I'm including it. <laughs> Here we meet an old villain from Apocalypse. So old, in fact, not even Big Barda remembers him. His name is Sleaze, and he has a plan to get revenge on Darkseid, who banished him from Apocalypse, and to forge his own army. He plans to use Big Barda's Mega Rod to mind control both her and Superman into making a certain intimate kind of tape that I can't say on YouTube, but you know what I'm talking about. Superman came to her rescue, you see, but when Barda was ready to kill Sleaze for taking control of her for the last two days, Superman attempted to stop her because he's Superman and he's like, you can't just kill people, Barda. No! This caused Barda to think that Superman was somehow being controlled by Sleaze, which allowed Sleaze to actually take control of both Superman and Barda once the two turned on one another. Sleaze set them up to get all steamy together in front of the camera, but fortunately, his plan to ship the two heroes intimately for the sake of the public's enjoyment so he can get that army and make that money was foiled by Miracle Man who came to rescue his wife. Number two, Green Lantern and Arisia Rob. Maybe one of the most awkward relationships in all of comic book history. Arisia Rob was initially presented as being like a younger sister figure when it came to her and Hal Jordan's relationship. In fact, I think he even at one point calls her little sister. She was also a member of the core, the Green Lantern core, but she was also kind of like a kid too. That is until she willed herself to grow up. Why did Arisia do this? Well, because she was in love with Hal and she wanted to be with him, but he refused her advances because he felt it would be wrong. After all, she was a kid and at the time she was a teenager. He was like, this is not okay. However, his tune changed once Arisia aged herself up. Once Arisia was, you know, all grown up, the two ended up dating and eventually they would even live together, if you can believe that. Looking back on their relationship and date now, the awkwardness and just plain wrongness feels impossible to avoid in the context of the modern day. Number one, Supergirl and Comet. Supergirl once dated a horse. Yep her own horse, Comet. Comet, however, wasn't always a horse and was once a minotaur that desired to be human. However, while Cersei attempted to make his wish come true, she was tricked and instead the centaur named Byron was turned into a full horse instead of becoming a full human. Which is just such a Cersei thing to happen, isn't it? Even though it was a mistake. Cersei felt bad and gave Byron superpowers and immortality as a white horse to kind of make up for the whole turning him into a horse as opposed to a human. As as a horse, Comet also became a friend and ally to Supergirl, but little did she know, he was not just a horse, but a minotaur trapped in the body of a horse who wanted to be human, and who also was in love with her. When Comet was temporarily transformed into a human, rather than reveal to Supergirl his true identity when she came looking for her horse companion, he decided to take up the name of Bronco Bill Star, keep the truth of his identity a secret from her, and woo her instead. Number 10, Cyclops and Emma Frost. Cyclops 
Phillips and Emma Frost are a couple that a lot of people love together and wholeheartedly ship. And you know what? I get why. Although when I started working here years ago, I myself was very pro Jean and Psych and anti Emma and Psych. Over time, I too have come around to one, loving Emma, and two, loving Scott and Emma together. However, that doesn't mean that when they got together following Jean's death and made out on her grave, it wasn't weird as all heck. Why was it weird? Well, because Jean had just died. And because up until this point, Cyclops and Emma's relationship was kind of in like a weird limbo period. And this was one of the things that cemented it, which feels really weird. However, Jean's force ghost, or rather Jean in astral form, had sent a message to Scott to give him her blessing for him to move on with Emma, you know, to live. Or I guess maybe it was Jean in the white hot room. Is that what that's called? The white hot room? I'm pretty sure. Hence why these two made out on Jean's grave and seemingly felt pretty fine about it. And sure, Jean may have also been fine with it as she did give her blessing, but that doesn't get rid of the weirdness of making out on a gravestone. Especially the weirdness of making out on a gravestone that belongs to a dead friend, dead lover, and in Emma's case, a dead rival and former enemy. Number 9. She-Hulk and Iron Man She-Hulk and Iron Man ending up together doesn't sound so weird on paper. Both are generally known for being avid daters in the Marvel Universe and having a long list of partners and one night stands. And ex-partners. They got long lists. However, in this case, it did somehow feel kind of weird. Maybe it had to do with the fact that it was on the down low and they weren't so much dating as just hooking up. Or maybe it was the fact that they were just hooking up and Tony was also She-Hulk's boss at the time. Either way, this is a relationship that I could see working out, but that in actuality turned out to be pretty weird in the comics. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, be sure to show us that you love us by heading on over to our newer channel, Most Amazing Top 10 Anime, and giving it a subscribe. We're gonna be doing lots of cool anime content on there, and we want you to watch it. Number eight, Black Canary and Batman. Probably one of the weirdest dates of all time was one that happened between Black Canary and Batman. If you can even call it a date. It wasn't really a date, but we're gonna call it a date for the sake of this list that I can tell you about it. In a former main continuity, these two were actually almost together for a very brief moment in time when Black Canary found herself caught in a weird love triangle stuck between between Batman and Green Arrow. However, in the Earth 31 All-Star reality, these two actually hook up after beating up some criminals together. Nothing says romance like a Molotov cocktail and setting people on fire. Number 7, Rogue and Magneto. Rogue and Magneto might seem like an awkward pairing, but you know, they actually kind of work okay together. In fact, they work so well together that in the Age of Apocalypse reality, they end up married and even have a child together. Rogue and Magneto in the main continuity developed a close connection during their adventure on the Savage Lands, but it was cut short when their time together ended. Magneto was forced to choose between the life that he'd known and Rogue, but he felt as though it would not actually be possible for them to be together. He felt like there was too many conflicting things. So he decided to, you know, not be with Rogue. Although unspecified really in the comics, there is likely a huge age difference there. But Magneto is one of the few people who can touch Rogue in the comics, thanks to his very small magnetic force field, which exists all around and very close to his body. When I say small, I mean it's not like force field out here. It's like very tight to his body. So he can seemingly touch people, but not really because he's got the force field. Comics. It's a real explanation. Number six, Batman and Cheetah. Batman and Cheetah got together, almost, in the DC animated universe. They didn't so much get together and go on a date as uh, kind of just flirt with one another though. Well, Batman was tied up. And allude to the potential chemistry that could be between them if they did choose to date each other. Admittedly, Batman was likely just flirting with Cheetah to manipulate the villain and get himself free as he was, you know, kind of kidnapped and held at the time. But regardless, it did seem like sparks could fly between these two, even if Batman didn't need to use his sense of compassion and charm to get free. Part of that may actually have been genuine too. And the two did share a kiss while Batman was in captivity. Although, I don't know, captivity kisses. I don't know if they count. Did look consensual though, so I think it was a willing kiss. Number five, Rogue and Sentry. Rogue and the Sentry are a couple who never dated on panel. Rather, we found out during the Sentry's funeral that these two were even an item, which is already kind of awkward. Why is the rest of it awkward? Well, one, because Rogue burst into tears over their relationship and the death of Robert Reynolds at said gathering and said funeral. But two, also because I'm pretty sure Bob would have been married when he got together with Rogue. 
I might be wrong with this one, but I'm pretty sure he would have been, as far as I know. Sentry is famously married to Lindy Lee, so either this happened while the two were on a break, before they were married, or Robert just straight up cheated on Lindy with Anna Marie. Admittedly, the two got together because he was one of the few people who could apparently touch Rogue, who at the time struggled to resist harming people with her touch, as her powers were basically uncontrollable at that time. Robert, like Magneto, was one of the few people Rogue could safely touch, so kind of does make sense that they'd be together. However, I still have questions about was the Sentry married at that time, or how does that work? Is that okay? Did Lindy know? <laughs> Questions. Number four, Green Lantern and Star Sapphire. Usually when you think of Star Sapphire and Green Lantern together, you're thinking of Carol Ferris and Hal Jordan. But did you know that Carol also dated Green Lantern Kyle Rayner? Their relationship was not only random, but also pretty painful for Hal, who has been known as the long running off and on again partner of Star Sapphire, Carol Ferris. In fact, the two had an affection for each other back when she was his boss, before they were ever in a cosmic setting. Kyle and Carol didn't last as a couple for too long, probably because the whole idea of them dating felt really weird and random to most fans. And maybe even to them in canon, because it is weird. Number three, Wolverine and Jean Grey. Jeannie and Wolverine have had a few awkward moments together in the main continuity. When I say a few, I mean I feel like there's a long list of awkwardness. Like the time that Jean supposedly cheated on Slim with Logan, or the time when Wolverine helped Jean to rip her dress while attempting an escape and he ripped it a little too well and a little too enthusiastically. But one of the most awkward date related moments for me comes from the end of the world, which they both found themselves at together. This happens in a what if about Avengers vs X-Men. In the end, not only do all of the heroes who are fighting against one another die, but also all of humanity as well. Jean Grey's Phoenix, however, returns to save Wolverine so that they can return to Earth once it is healed to start again. Which seems to imply that they are getting ready to bring new life to the planet, of which they are currently the only two people existing on, as the ghosts of the fallen heroes look on in the background, or are, you know, there in memory. The weird thing is that Phoenix is likely powerful enough to have just, you know, brought them all back if she wanted. But instead, she chooses to use her power to simply let everyone die and set the scene for like kind of an Adam and Eve style date with Logan. An interesting choice, Gene. Number two, old Batman and Ra's al Ghul? This one comes to us from Batman Beyond, where we see an old man, Bruce Wayne, as Terry McGinnis, the new future Batman's mentor. Old Bruce at one point reconnects with an old flame, who has still kept her youth, Talia al Ghul. The problem? It isn't really Talia, but Ra's, disguised within Talia's body, who is hoping to poach Batman's bod for his own and use the Lazarus pits to basically make Bruce's form young again. The two share a nostalgic and Somewhat romantic evening before this is revealed though, and even at one point share a kiss, which I'm sure when Bruce finds out later that it's actually Raish, he's like, oh boy, I did not want to kiss Raish al Ghul and yet here we are. I mean at least Raish was in Talia's body, no, I think that makes it worse. Number one, Wolverine and Mary Jane. One of the most awkward dates to rule them all. This one likely happened off panel as we never really saw it. It involved Wolverine and Mary Jane getting together while Wolverine was actually in Peter Parker's body. So once again, weird body swap date things. That's right, we are talking about the ultimate comics in this case. It was awkward because Peter only really found out about it later, and probably one of the weirdest and maybe worst ways that you could. That is, he found out that while Wolverine was in his body, he somehow found some time to put the moves on MJ, who basically asked Peter later, once he was safely back in his body, to wait till they were older before he tried to do what he attempted earlier that morning. Which obviously he's like, I wasn't me that morning. Oh my goodness. So yeah. Yikes. Number 10, Rogue and Deadpool. These two are people who both have a lot of weird dates. At one point, Deadpool and Rogue had a team up that ended up in a kiss. The super strange part of it was that Rogue kissing Deadpool caused her to absorb some of his powers, which also caused her skin to temporarily resemble, well, Deadpool skin. Not like his actual face, but just, you know how his skin's all, you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of nasty. Deadpool himself felt embarrassed about the whole thing. As much as he was into Rogue, he felt they could never be together because of all the trauma he carried with him in his mind and how he messed everything up. But Rogue just kissed him again, took a closer look inside his mind, and while at first she was somewhat taken aback, admittedly, after a breath, she said that after the Red Skull, having weight in her mind was basically a palate cleanser. 
and the two continued to smooch for a while longer. Even more awkward later, when Gambit and Rogue were back together, Gambit would actually bring up this makeout sesh, seemingly a bit jealous. What do you think makes a superhero date awkward? Do you think it's an interruption, weird pairings, or you know, something else? Let us know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Number 9. Green Lantern and Jillian Perlman This date got pretty awkward pretty quickly when Star Sapphire crashed it. At the time, Hal Jordan aka Green Lantern was on a date with Jillian Perlman, when Star Sapphire arrived attempting to steal him away. This Star Sapphire was none other than Hal's old flame, Carol Ferris. Seeing that she was possessed by the power of Star Sapphire, Hal attempted to free Carol and succeeded, but at the cost of Jillian who found herself next possessed by the power of the Star Sapphires. Also awkwardly becoming one herself, and then calling herself yummy. It was weird. It was weird. It was a weird time. And friends, before I move on to this next spot, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, you need to check out our newest channel, Most Amazing Top 10 Anime. Head on over, hit that subscribe button, make sure those bell notifications are on because you're not going to want to miss it. Number 8. Deadpool and Outlaw In a weird turn of events, what turned into a long, awkward time with Outlaw kind of ended up as like a nice, raunchy, and actually kind of sweet date, I guess, in the end. In typical Deadpool fashion, really. For those who don't know Outlaw, she's a mutant whose real name is Inez Temple. She's worked as a bodyguard for Dazzler before and is also a good friend of Deadpool's. At one point, the two even ended up married. After Deadpool called on Outlaw for some help after being shot, he sought refuge in her place, but accidentally wrecked her apartment as he was found out and, well, you know, attacked there. To make things right, by the end of the Deadpool Suicide Kings miniseries, Deadpool bought Outlaw a new pad and new furniture. That's right, he bought her a whole new apartment. That's so nice. She thanked him and because she too cared for him and thought what he had done for her was like super sweet, decided to show her appreciation intimately. I think that's all I can really say. I'll let the panels speak for themselves. Number 7. Starfire and Nightwing Starfire and Nightwing once had a pretty awkward moment on a date when Barbara Gordon showed up. Lots of awkward moments involving uh, this little love triangle for sure. It was a date that Nightwing aka Dick Grayson only learned was awkward years later. Babs at one point showed up to Dick's place with flowers and chocolates likely for him, only to have the door answered by a half-dressed Cory. Babs introduced herself, kind of, but she couldn't really bring herself to stay. Too sad to know that she'd already lost Nightwing. Corey never told Dick that Barbara Gordon had been the one at the door, likely sensing that Barbara, you know, needed some time and needed some space. I don't think this was Starfire trying to be mean, I think this was Starfire trying to be considerate in a way. I think that also may have been considered these two women's first meeting in canon, at least at that time anyways. Not sure if it's still considered that, but at the time, pretty sure it was. Number 6. She-Hulk and Thor She-Hulk and Thor have dated in the past, and while not everyone was a big fan of the couple, the two have had some memorable moments together during their time serving on the Avengers, while also seeing one another. Things can get awkward when you date someone who you, you know, you also work with. Especially when you're around your other teammates and co-workers. There's a lot of potential for things to get weird. In this case, we're talking about the awkwardness of the Avengers team and their reaction to the sometimes oddly intimate moments that, of course, they witnessed. Case in point, when the Avengers all decide to go hot tubbing together and She-Hulk decides to join them in the buff. Now admittedly, a lot of other people were in the buff, but She-Hulk was really in the buff. <laughs> standing there in all of her green glory. Thor was very happy to see She-Hulk, as was seemingly Tony, while also feeling a little shocked, but pretty much everyone else was just kind of both like shocked and embarrassed at She-Hulk's um, boldness. It was an awkward but also kind of cute and funny moment overall. I like that Carol was like trying to cover up uh, Ghost Rider's eyes. She's like, don't look. Number 5. Donna Troy and Terry Long While She-Hulk and Thor might seem like a super logical pairing, how about Donna Troy and Terry Long? I feel like one of the most illogical things that we've ever done. They were definitely objectively odd together, I would say, and yet they didn't only date. They got full on married. Despite the fact that Terry was seemingly years older than Donna, constantly flirting with her friend and teammate Starfire, and used to be Donna's professor. Yeah, 
Can you spell problematic? I'm pretty sure you can just spell it with Donna Troy and Terry Long. Or I mean, I guess Donna Long as she became for a while. I think she kept her name though. Donna Long would be a terrible name, would it not? The relationship would actually go on for quite some time, but eventually even DC realized some of the problems with these two being together. Terry and Donna would have a child together, but later separate before Terry and their son Robert, as well as his daughter from a previous marriage, Jennifer, were actually killed in a car crash. The really bizarre part was that Terry actually was the one who actually actively sought to separate from Donna, deeming her too dangerous to be around, and even got a restraining order against her. Which is weird, you'd think it would be the other way, but no, Terry was the one that was like, we definitely need to get divorced and I definitely need a restraining order cause you dangerous, cause you're superhero life. If you're worried about danger, I feel like don't marry a superhero, just a suggestion to people. Number 4, Miss Marvel and Vision. This one is mainly awkward because it's an awkward pairing. To be clear, when we're talking about Miss Marvel, here, we're actually not talking about Kamala Khan, but instead we're talking about Carol Danvers, back when she was known by that hero mantle, Miss Marvel, before she gave the name to Kamala. While Vision is often associated with Scarlet Witch in regards to romance, after the two went their separate ways but were both Avengers, Viz decided to try his hand at dating himself. Wanda at this point had moved on with Wonder Man, and when Vision asked Carol out, I think everyone, readers included, were a little shocked. Carol also was surprised, but after making sure it was fine with Wanda agreed to the date. The date they went on seemed to be going quite well, but it was interrupted by an emergency call to action, and despite it being a seemingly successful date where both of them had fun, the two never really dated again, as far as we know. If they did date, I think it was off panel because I can't think of any other ones. It's awkward when you have a really good date and then you're like, let's just never see each other again. This was fun, but like, I'll see you on the team. That's it. I don't know, maybe Carol isn't into like Android beings or something. Maybe that's what she realized on that date. She was like, I like Viz, but like as a friend. Number three, Ice and Green Lantern. So initially, Ice and Green Lantern got along pretty well, but then everything changed. Namely, Guy Gardner returned to the man that he'd always been, which meant that Ice didn't actually like him so much anymore. You see, Fire and Ice joined the Justice League of America after Guy Gardner, aka Green Lantern, had suffered from some head trauma that actually caused him to become a lot more cool, calm, collected, he was sweet, he was kind, and that's how the two always knew him. Eventually, however, his true personality would return and take over, and that was when he tricked Ice into going out on a date with him, kind of like challenging her to do it, basically. And she was like, fine, I'll go out on a date with you. We'll see. We'll see if you're actually nice or not. Where did Guy take her, by the way? A theater that shows... Adult films. Yeah. I think you can imagine how it went. Not so good. Ice was like, what is this? You really are a jerk, Guy Gardner. He's like, well, I am who I am. Gotta give Guy that, at least he is who he is and he doesn't really apologize for it. For better or for worse. Number two, Nightcrawler and Amanda Sefton. Although we now know her as Amanda Sefton more commonly, originally Amanda was known as Jemaine Zardos. As a Nightcrawler fan, you may already know the significance of this name, but for those who don't, Allow me to explain. Nightcrawler is the son of Azazel and Mystique, but they both dipped pretty early on in his life. Abandoned, Nightcrawler was found and taken in by Margali, a sorceress. Margali had two children when she took in Kurt, one of which was Jemaine. That's right, Margali Zardos is Nightcrawler's adopted mother, making Jemaine his adopted sister. Oh boy. Eventually, Kurt Zardos left his family, became Kurt Wagner, and joined the X-Men. But Jemaine was curious about his leaving and his potential involvement in their brother's death. So she decided to change her name to Amanda Sefton, followed him, and then surprisingly ended up dating him? The really awkward part is that after Kurt kind of figured out that Amanda was actually Jemaine, he still decided to keep dating her. I mean, they wouldn't stay together forever, but it's weird, right? <laughs> Number one, Batman and Talia al Ghul. Batman and Talia al Ghul, hmm, some people love them, some people think they're toxic together, some people hate them. I mean, even the moments when I do love them, I personally still think they're pretty toxic together, so yeah. I mean, granted, a lot of superhero relationships are somewhat toxic, let's just acknowledge that. I also consider these two to be toxic even without considering or, you know, focusing on the fact that Talia in canon forced herself on Bruce and basically that's how she got and we got uh, Damian Wayne. Yeesh. These two have had plenty of awkward dates and let's not forget the time they were basically married in secret as well, which also is just a whole kind of weird, I mean it's, it's just weird. That was a whole weird thing. 
Really, everything is weird with Batman and Talia. Perhaps that's also part of the reason why people love them together though too? I don't know. I don't really see it. I'm personally very pro Batman and Catwoman. Batman and Talia, I'm like, I think there's too many things that have happened where we just need to be like, no, don't do it. 